I will skip a few of the slides because I think we are the same people who were here yesterday, right? Yes. So I can uh, straight away go to concrete inspection. Right? So as uh, very good morning, Mr. Chairman, and all of us here. As Mr. Chairman discussed in his presentation, that a uh, lot of structures are uh, getting old, and the periodic inspection of the structures are very, very important, so that we can uh, get continued benefits from these structures. And if some repairs and rehabilitation is required in the early stage of deterioration, it definitely helps in having a better life and better service from the structures. Now, as of now, if we look at the inspections of existing structures, you can classify them either as a physical inspection, when the problem gets manifested on the surface, or by destructive investigation, by taking cores and things like this. What we are going to talk about here today is non-destructive investigation of concrete structures, which applies to all kinds of concrete structures. It can be bridges, it can be any other structures, it can be your, your uh, you know, simple uh, concrete decks, concrete uh, walls. So we'll just go to, uh, and we are going to focus only on one technique here because there are various uh, non-destructive techniques and DD techniques which are being used in India. And yesterday I was talking to a few of the people who had come from Ahmedabad from uh, Gujarat Engineering Research Institute, which has a separate division apparently for concrete inspection. But they also are not using GPR. So I'll focus primarily on GPR because this is still uh, not very widely known. Okay, so a very, very brief introduction to GPR. We are not going in, in, in great details. GPR is standing for ground penetrating radar. And in this, we are sending electromagnetic impulses into the ground and we are seeing what is underground. In GPR, whenever we are talking, you always come through uh, terms like A scan, B scan and C scan. So, I have just represented here, A scan is nothing but looking at a single pulse of energy going down and coming back. B scan is putting these pulses together in a two-dimensional image and C scan is putting in a three-dimensional image. So, these are uh, A scan, B scan and C scan. The development of GPR uh, has taken place from 1929 onwards, so it's not a very new technology. But 1972 was the time when the first commercial GPR was made by GSSI. And it was only after 1990 that GPR has gone digital. And uh, in India, the first use of GPR was in 1996 when I brought it from Canada for a project of Delhi Metro. And so in 1996 onwards, we are using GPR in India. But world over also, more of the development has come after 90. So it's not something very old as far as the commercial use is concerned. Uh, reason for that is simple that it needs a lot of memory and a lot of processing. We are working with electromagnetic waves which are uh, traveling at the speed of light. So the processing has to be done very fast and data quantities are very huge. So it's only with the more development in electronics and computers, ICs, that GPR has become more popular. So, once we talk about radar, it stands for radio detection and ranging. This is something which is used for a lot of defense application, a lot of navigation application. On your airport, you can see this, uh, this radar which is being used to detect aircrafts. In World War II, it was used to detect enemy aircrafts and submarines and all that. So, it's the same technology. Radio, so, idea is that there is a transmitter receiver. It is sending this radar waves object. It gets reflected from there and you receive it. So this is how we detect aircrafts entering our our territory. The same technique when we are using when we focus this energy into the ground, it becomes ground penetrating radar. So here we have a transmitter, we have a receiver. We are sending these electromagnetic impulses into the ground. They are getting reflected from any interface across which there is a contrast in dielectric constant or permittivity as you call it, and it gets reflected, comes to the receiver, and we get the image. So this is very, very uh, fundamental of GPR. Now, when we send the energy, if you see transmitter receiver are in a single antenna. So if you take this, this is like an antenna, this is the ground surface. So the transmitter is here, receiver is here, and we are dragging it on the ground like this. So it is continuously sending these impulses into the ground. One impulse is going directly from transmitter to receiver. So this is a transmitter receiver, one is going direct. So on the top, you always have this direct impulse and then wherever there is a reflection, the reflected re impulse comes. And these are the symbols of different utilities which are inside the ground. 
So this is in, in, in short how it works. So if you look at like this, this is let's say my interface. Interface can be anything. It can be a sand layer over the clay layer. It can be a concrete slab over uh, like a air interface. It can be a concrete slab over sand filling. It can be any interface across which that is changing electromagnetic properties. So this is the interface. So here the reflections are taking place like this. But when it goes over a buried object, what happens is that EM waves are working not like laser. So if you look at a laser wave, for example, if uh, if I look at this here, it goes like this, it's straight, it's going straight. But if you look at a torch, if if we had a torch and I had put the torch like here, at that point I would have had a big circle, right? And similarly, when I speak, even without this, he can hear me. He also can hear me and he also can hear me. That is my energy is going like this. Similarly, torch energy is going like a cone. Similarly, electromagnetic energy also is going inside the earth like a cone. And this cone is 45 degrees forward and 45 degrees backward and 30 degrees sideways. So what happens when you have an interface like this, even if the energy hits like this in this direction, it will get reflected like this and it will not be picked up by receiver. But when you come across a cylindrical or a spherical object, all the parts on this periphery become reflectors. So when 45 degree energy comes like this, it gets reflected and comes back to the receiver. So you have a travel time like this. And similarly, when the antenna moves slightly closer, again the energy comes back, you have a travel time like this. When it's right on the top, it's a vertical reflection, you have a travel time like this. So across a, high, a spherical or cylindrical object, you have development of something what we call a hyperbola. This is the strength of GPR for detection, detection of cylindrical or spherical object other than the interfaces. So this interface will be reproduced like an interface, but this will be detected like a hyperbola.